flag, red flag. Red flag. Jesse. Scott. We're out. We're finished then. I'm now like starting to feel the big question marks over me. Welcome back to Free Practice 3. It was awful. I remember I just struggled with everything. Now it's like, okay, we have one practice left. Michael, I know it's hard, right? But chin up. We're in this and it's good. The race was coming around very quickly. This was the last opportunity before he jumps in the race. He's driving very solid at the moment. He definitely made a step, was a little bit in a better mindset. You know, this was a step in the right direction. Welcome everyone to the Le Mans 24 hours. It's such a momentous occasion to be a part of this. The start of this motor race is the best in the world. Best of luck all of you. Here we go. And the hype cars accelerate away side by side. We were able to pick quite a few cars off. We had really good speed, good pace. Michael Fassbender looked like he's getting ready to take over in the number nine. Michael Fassbender looked like he's getting ready to take over in the number nine. Michael Fassbender looked like he's getting well, you've done your first two stints. We're in uh, quite a good situation, considering at where we had come from earlier in the race weekend. Michael is ready? Yeah. I was looking forward to doing the night session because I was proud of myself, I guess, that I was taking the full-on challenge of Le Mans, you know. He knew what to do now. You know, he was into rhythm, he knew what to expect going into the race, and he just had to basically do the same thing that he had done in, in the previous double stint. Coming to the night, it's, it's a totally different mind game simply because the visibility is less. Michael, three LMP2s arriving. We had a good system, you know, where Arna would tell me over the radio what was approaching from behind, so I knew what sort of speeds were to be expecting as the car was approaching. The car behind is a Ferrari. Michael, one LMP2 behind me. down at Marshall Point 25. Indianapolis. And there we go. Car 93, so that is a Michael Fassbender Porsche, who is in that car right now. Michael is in that car right uh, now, I'm afraid. In the barrier once again, Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Right side. Dude, don't know what to say. I thought I left him enough room there. Shit. What did he do? Somebody hit him. What has happened? So, oh, he's lost a bit the front end. Oh no, he's oh, no, had no, made no. contact. It wasn't his fault. He's trying to make room for the car on the inside. Now, who was that? 
Unfortunately, he's made big contact with the tyre barrier. I mean, that's like ridiculous. It looked like Michael was trying to give as much room as he could, trying to drive off the track almost in, in avoidance. Ah, oh, I'm not sure I can blame him for that one. Looking at the impact and looking at, you know, the speed that he actually hit the tyre wall uh, with, I thought, okay, fuck, this is it. I mean, now, you know, we're out of the race. There's no way you can use a escape road or anything else or you're stuck in the gravel. Where is he going? Tell him he should come to the pits. Michael, you have to come to the pits. You have to come to the pits. Michael couldn't really go back to the track straight because the car was pointing in the wrong direction. He needs to get it turned around because if he turns around in the gravel, he'll get stuck in the gravel. So he's trying to find a way to do a three-pointer to get to use that access road that he's on to get back onto the track. The Ferrari went over the curve and drove into you. Michael was not your fault. It was not your fault. He's behind the barriers here, trying to do a three-point turn so he can get back onto the access road that he was on. I didn't really expect the car to be repairable, but then they pushed the car around and he rejoined the track. I can't steer this thing, it's totally fucked. Well, we just trying to come back very, very slowly to the pit. No risk, no risk, and stay on the racing line. It was a very, very, uh, yeah, dangerous situation because the car was just going very slow and he had to basically avoid the traffic and f somehow find a way back to the pits. I think the steering is fucked. Then they cannot steer anymore. Fassbender makes his way into the pits. Oh, and look at that damage to the right-hand side. The annoying thing is he's going to take this so personally, right? And, and it's really nothing to do with him. It's not his fault. But you can, you know that he's going to beat himself up. Oh, good. It wasn't even you, mate. No. That's not your fault. No. Michael, that's not your fault. He came in so fast, straight into you. You did the right thing. I couldn't close the door on him because he was right alongside. Yeah, but in any case, you did the right thing and then he just came like from nowhere. It's all good, man. Honestly. Done honestly. You were like going wide into Indy, and I didn't see him coming. I thought you like missed the egg a little bit, and then I just I saw him shoot over the course. Yeah, so I looked and in my mirror, and he was like in the mines. I mean, there was like a replay a couple of times. I was like, fucking, that's. What did they say? Like, it's under investigation. If he wouldn't have hit you, he would have gone straight into the wall. It's way too fast. Just break and let him go. Yeah, but like you know. He was flying across the track, it's like, he was almost like, you were like this, and the car came like that. Yes. It was, yeah, a nightmare. Now we were in the same situation as in the days before, that we have to bring the car back, have to repair it, another setback. You know, how many setbacks can a person actually 
fight and you know how many things can a person deal with and I wasn't sure whether he would be would be uh, okay to race the rest of the race. Well, let's see. I mean, it didn't look as bad as I thought. I thought it was way more an impact on the front. I thought the chassis might be fucked. You know, that hit on the fucking yeah, fuck. hit the tire barrier, man. That's it. It's over. I thought the car's screwed. I felt like I'm massively under performed I felt like everything you know the years building up to this moment that you know this is it now and it's like it's like kind of like it's it's awful I just felt like it was pretty dark couldn't really like hold my head up I just remember I couldn't look at anyone you know it's just like it just beat me you know, like really really kind of ate me up. Before the crash, you know, everything was looking, you know, quite up, you know, after what had occurred and happened over the, over the weekend. And then, unfortunately, we, we get to another low point and, uh, you know, another quite a large accident. It was really quite hard for him to understand and, and take that because of what had occurred previously in the weekend. But in the end, this was a, a racing incident and a really unfortunate situation to be in because he did nothing wrong. Ferrari got a one minute stop and go. Vincent April aboard the car that was on pole position of GTN in fact. Once the car was in the garage and we started tearing into it, uh, we started to see that, you know, it was obviously repairable. We had to repair a lot on the car, uh, but in saying that we knew we could get it back out there and uh, continue in the race. So. I'll put you in just to see the car is okay. And then afterwards you can continue. Because if you put you now in and something's really bad, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, how long will that check it out for? Full laps, and then you just do driver change. That's it. You wanna try it? One of four. One of four. It's okay to keep driving. I mean, no vibrations by his feet or anything, so everything feels safe. Just obviously just steering as far along out to the left. So in the end, I think we lost around 14 laps, so basically one hour, but in the end, we were able to get back out on track and, and continue in the race. We still didn't lose the focus. We didn't lose the passion for the event and, you know, to finish it. It was almost like the Olympic idea to just get through all these uh, setbacks and to finish this race because I mean ultimately it is the road to Le Mans and we we made it to Le Mans and now the main focus was to finish Le Mans. If we could get to the finish of Le Mans 24 hour um, you know I think that would be a really positive uh, outcome for, for everything that's occurred you know in both the lead up and now in the race with the accident. Okay. Is that This a puncture to the left rear. Whoa, big moment. Ah, okay. Looking at Le Mans and the race it is, it's such a long race, so many things happen out there. Oh, oh no! And no. talking of suffering, is he going to get out of this gravel oh. trap? Keep the momentum, keep the momentum, he does. Sometimes you're not even the party that does the mistake, you just have to stay out of trouble and then see what's happening throughout the night and early in the morning. Oh. 
you have to give them credit for the job they did all three of them nobody was quitting nobody actually thought about you know stopping the race everybody was still focused everybody was still concentrating and pushing for the max and it's the barrier hard oh no drama this from is the 77, 77. And they've lost a podium position here We all knew it's not going to be an easy task to basically buckle up and go out on track again. And you know, whatever about finishing something and underperforming and being slow, making mistakes out there, at least you did it, you know. At least I can say I did it. Uh, if, I, if I walked away and said, hey guys, I can't get back in the car, I mean, that's like, I don't think you, you can come back from something like that. It was really essential that I got in there and I finished the race and I did my best in those in the last two hours. And the three crew we box this lap already. We box now, we box now. When we stop to the full fuel, then Michael goes into the car. Three laps to go, three laps, and then you have more than one hour. Okay. Michael Box, this lap, Box, Box. Okay. 93 crew, full stop service. You also give him no time. Just last stint, safety for everything. Michael is having very solid, one more stint. Okay. Yeah, but I'm telling you, without the incident with the fucking uh, Italian car, it would have been top 10, no? For sure. I think I was probably sad that it was the last lap and I wasn't leaving the car going, you know, I did the best that I could. And I'm, I mean, I did do the best that I could because it was bloody challenging at times to get, you know, to overcome the, the gremlins and stuff like that. You know, but, um, but I didn't perform at my best, so I wasn't going, wow, yeah, you know, I really arrived here and I showed my best version of myself in the car, you know. Definitely not. We're not finished yet. I know, but sorry, But if you finish, man. you're a Lamar finisher. I know, fuck it. No, it's okay. okay. If that it's your fault, I would kick your ass. That was not your fault. Small things can become big things very easily. And then all of a sudden, 
when you've given the opportunity to go back home, have some quiet time, spend some time with the family, it sinks in as to what you've put yourself through, the achievement of taking part, the achievement, we hope, of coming to the finish.